All right, this is the class of Professor Hunter, Econ 202. This is Bruce. I'm Luis. And Steven. All right, today we're going to discuss real versus nominal variables. First, we're going to discuss definition, then a formula, and finally an example. All right, first, Bruce will begin. He'll discuss the definition of all the variables. All right, we have three key terms. The first term is real variable, the second term is nominal variable, and the third term is inflation. <coughs> With real variable, there is the effects of inflation have been factored in. With a nominal variable, there is an effect of inflation that have not been accounted for. And inflation is an increase in the price of basket of goods that represent the economy as a whole. I'm going to take it over to Steve. These three terms are very essential for understanding the formula. Real interest rate equals nominal interest rate minus inflation. When inflation rate is positive, which tends to be, real interest rate is less than the nominal interest rate. When inflation is negative, real interest rate is greater than the nominal interest rate. Nominal interest rate is the amount of money in a bank account that rises over time, which vice versa can also decrease. Real interest rate is the purchasing power you have over time. Here's at least a hypothetical example in everyday life. All right, we have Chris, who is a soccer player, and he tends to buy a lot of cleats so it can last him throughout the year. In this bank, he has a thousand dollars with a 20% interest rate. And here we're going to discuss how inflation will play a role in the amount of cleats you can buy throughout the year. Alright, with zero inflation, the cleats stay at a price of $100, in which you can buy 12 cleats, because throughout the year, with the 20% interest rate, the amount he has in the bank increases to 1200 And now we have the 20% inflation rate. The price of the cleats goes up to $120 because of the inflation. Thus, he can only buy 10 cleats. And here's a third example. All right, now we have a 30% inflation rate and the price of the cleats goes all the way up to $130. And <clears throat> now he can only buy nine cleats. And we're gonna have Steven finish it off and to discuss how this formula relates to how you get this. All right. To start off, Chris's purchasing power is $10,000, is $1,000. Over time, inflation is at zero. His purchasing power is $100 per cleat, which is $12 per cleat, which is $12. You can buy 12 cleats. <laughs> and then with a 20% with a interest rate and in inflation, the nominal, and this can affect the nominal, his money in the bank is still the same, which is a thousand. But since over time inflation has gone up, which has decreased his purchasing power to ten cleats. Over time, inflation increases, which his purchasing power over time has decreased. So his his amount his amount of money stays the same, but his purchasing power has has declined, which means he, each cleat has risen in price to 130 and is, he can only buy nine cleats since his purchasing power has gone down. And we are now concluding, and this is a conclusion to nominal versus real variables.